Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here at Matt Tuttle Fishing. We're super excited to have you guys back. And like we we'll always say, if you like what you see here, you like the content, don't forget to hit the like and a subscribe button on the video so you can get all of our future content. And what I want to talk to you guys today about in our Tuttle Tackle Tips is dock shooting or we, what we do in our part of the country, we shoot jigs up underneath pontoon boats and docks. So I want to I want to break that down just a little bit and give you the tools that uh, we have taken the time to make sure that uh, we perfect and make it as easy as possible. So what I want to talk about is the rod. And first of all, with the rod, for me, I'm not very tall, uh, and I like to be a good distance away from the boat or a good distance away from the dock. I like to typically be. 10 to 15 feet or so back away from the object that I'm trying to shoot a jig up underneath. And so the rod that I like, it's actually a 6'3". Uh, a lot of folks can use 6'6", six, six, even 7 foot. But one of the key things is, is to have a one piece rod. A one piece rod and that it be a, uh, a medium action rod. Not a medium light, not a medium heavy. Just a medium action rod six foot to seven foot long and that'll give you a great parabolic balance in the rod when you're going to shoot and pull you're going to load the rod up and shoot and i'm going to demonstrate that here in just a little bit a little later in the video exactly how i load the rod up and shoot the bait and so then i also pair it with a reel that has a very large spool capacity and on a reel it's typically the 20 series or the 30 series, depending on what brand reel you go with. Uh, some of the 2500, the 2000, the 3000 series. But I wouldn't go over the 3000 or the 30 series. I would st stick with the 2000, the 2500 series, or, you know, like I said, don't go over the 30 or the 3000 series. But you want that larger spool capacity. And reason for that is, is that you're going to gain velocity when you let go to that jig. It's got a bigger spool capacity and you're putting more line on that reel. And when you load that rod up and shoot that, you got it's just a bigger space for that line to come off of. And when you're fishing with a, a little micro reel or real small uh, mini reel, uh, it just doesn't allow for that line to come off correctly. And again, I'll show you guys a little later in a video of what I'm talking about. And I typically use six pound line uh, monofilament uh, line uh, to to be able to balance what I'm trying to achieve. I, I have used fluorocarbon in the past, uh, but re remember fluorocarbon sinks. So to try to understand where your jig at is in the water column, it's going to be off a little bit because your line is sinking. Uh, so I typically use just monofilament and then if I want to get further back up underneath a dock or further back up underneath a pontoon boat, I'll go to four pound line. And what you have to be careful is when you go down to four pound line, you, know, you lose your abrasibility. And so, you know, you have to constantly be checking your line all the time with four pound line. And so that's why I typically run all, all six pound, but I'll have a four pound spool reel in the boat in case I need to get back to some fish that, you know, for whatever reason, they're in the backs of those docks or they're way back up underneath and you'll be amazed. You'll gain two to three, sometimes even four feet on your on your on your shot up underneath the dock by just changing line size. Hey guys, what I'm going to show you now is how to hold the rod, hold the jig head, and the simultaneously letting go of the jig a millisecond before you let go of the line off the reel. And so, what's going to be very very important is that I'm holding the jig head. Okay, don't hold the hook. You want that way when the jig head leaves, the hook is leaving with it. You don't want to grab the hook, you'll put it in your finger. So make sure you grab the jig head when you're going to shoot the bait. That's very, very key. All right, so when you get ready to shoot, you've got the line in your finger, the bail is open, the jig head is in your finger like this. All right, now I'm going to pull this back. And I'm going to let go of this jig just a half a second before I let go of the line off the reel. And it, it'll take you a little bit of practice. And what I like to do is to take a five gallon bucket and lay it on its side, opening facing me. And I practice shooting that jig 
into that bucket. And it'll take a few times just to get used to it. It'll be a little awkward when you first start. But I wanna show you, I'm gonna turn around here and I'm gonna show you how we load the rod up and we shoot the bait out. So again, I've got the jig head in my finger, line in my, my off the reel. I'm gonna load that rod up. You see how I load that rod up? I've got that loaded. And then I'm gonna let it go. I got the jig head. I got the jig head in my finger. The bail is open on the reel. Lines in my finger like this. And I'm loading that rod up. Now, like I'm not just barely pulling it, I'm loading it. Just like this. I'm not all bent over either. I'm not like this. So that's why it's key to be back away from your target at least 10 to 15 feet to allow this jig to work. So I got it pulled back, I let go of the jig, and I shoot it right just like that. Now I talked earlier in the video about the parabolic bend of a rod, and that's why it was so key to have a one-piece rod, medium action, and you'll see that rod, see how that whole rod bends like that. If you had a two-piece rod, it'd only bend out to the very tip. But having a one-piece rod loads up, you got that parabolic bend, and when you shoot it, it really increases the velocity on uh, the coming off of the spool.